Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Let's Talk Automotive. Uh, it's not our normal slot. It's Saturday and it's five o'clock, Pete. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to this one. This is going to be unique. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> right, in tonight's show, we have the latest and breaking automotive news. We review the Mazda CX-5, and our guest tonight is none other than Andre Boysen from Bolton and Bry. And then we're going to have game time, and we've got a studio audience that's going to be participating tonight. And uh, then we're going to have uh, our section on how things work, and we're going to end off with tap of the week. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our season finale. Welcome to Let's Talk Automotive. So, Mr. Phil Yudin, I haven't seen you for two weeks, man. I know, I've been busy, <laughs> but oh, it's awesome to be back in the studio, I've got to say. Absolutely, I'm, I'm glad that you're back. I missed you last week. <laughs> All right, so it's a very busy uh, racing weekend this weekend. We've got Formula One and we've got MotoGP. And did you see Mark Marquez in free practice? It, it, it was unbelievable. I mean, the guy was elbow down and still sliding the bike around. It's yeah. incredible. I can't wait. I, I, I honestly think he's going to win the race tomorrow. It's going to be very interesting. Yeah. Formula One qualifying this afternoon. The guys, uh, sort of the same sort of story again. Uh, you see, the difference now is um, I'm, I've, got, I've got to the point now where I'm, <laughs> I take Formula One. Okay. If it's exciting, <laughs> I'll watch, watch it. it. <laughs> because, uh, you know, Einstein once said, if you get the same result over and over again, yes. it's the definition of insanity. I hear you. And uh, I think I will probably throw my TV out if Hamilton <laughs> wins again. <laughs> well, I've got a very sneaky suspicion that we will see uh, Verstappen on the top step of the podium this weekend well then i'll watch it live in the next round pre-house okay okay cool <laughs> all right so i think let's uh, get the show on the road and let's start with this week's news all right pete okay so very very interesting and exciting times because the South African GT Racing Series, the association, started something new and we're actually attending the launch on Tuesday evening. I'm looking forward to this. I can't wait. And in fact, I don't know if you saw the, the live streaming of the GT Series this yes. afternoon. Yes. Very exciting racing. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm hoping that they've got some good news for us. And it looks like they are because it's uh, seemingly they're going to be aligning the vehicles closer to FIA specifications. Yes. And I think that's one of the things that's been missing for our own race drivers to get overseas is that they haven't been driving the same vehicle. So there's no yardstick for our yes. local drivers. So Just look at the visuals, Pete. This, this was a promotional video that was shot not too long ago, I think two, maybe three, four weeks ago down in P, if I'm not mistaken. But just look at this. This oh, at is going to be very, very entertaining. Ah, I mean, it's, it's just pure motoring porn, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so uh, that's something to look forward to this coming Tuesday. You guys at home, you can please keep an eye out on our Facebook page. We are going to be doing some interviews and getting some stories mm. on Tuesday evening, and we'll, uh, we'll put that out on the Facebook page. Okay, so I was very privileged this week, while you were down in Cape Town, I think, still, yep. um, to join the guys from Suzuki Auto South Africa, and they launched a minor update on the Suzuki Swift. And let me tell you, when they say minor update, they are actually talking a bit of bollocks. <laughs> because this new Suzuki Swift, you know, the, the small changes have just taken the, the Suzuki Swift to another level. Well, coincidentally, I actually bumped into the Suzuki team at Cape Town International. Yes. And the feedback I got from them was that the, the, the motoring uh, press Generous, were, yeah. were overwhelmed with, with this. So I think you're right. They, they may be understated the changes. I think so. And one of the changes, obviously, is that ESP now becomes standard in the vehicles. Correct. And we've spoken about this before. ESP, for me, is one of the must-have safety features on a vehicle. So it's awesome to see it on a small vehicle like the, the Swift. So on screen now is, is the red the red Suzuki Swift and something new that's now available in the Suzuki Swift range is the dual tone color options which is phenomenal Pete because they've always had this affinity or infinity sort of back pillar but just look at that 
in fun. red and black and they've got blue and white and all sorts of different options it's really really cool and the front grille obviously a, a, a major change in the front grille with a chrome strip that goes across the front and obviously the grille itself is also a bit of a bit of a change new updated mags this almost looks really very close to this the swift sport it does, and I think what's going to happen is that we're going to see Suzuki posting some more record months going forward because that vehicle looks Agree. Agree. really, really good. Something very interesting and something to keep in mind, that vehicle comes standard with a two-year and 30,000 kilometer service plan, which obviously you have the option to, to upgrade, um, and a promotional warranty. And listen to this. This, this says something about a, a manufacturer. Five-year, 200,000 kilometer warranty. Wow. That is that that's, is proper. That's proper. Sure. Okay. All right. Moving on to the next story, and this is something interesting because I've been keeping an eye out on this uh, for a, for a while now. It's the Nissan Magnite. <laughs> Have we got a picture there? Yeah. So my question is: Is it a Nissan or a Datnus? <laughs> because <laughs> that grill. There's a lot. There's a lot of Datsun coming through on this Nissan. <laughs> I must agree. That, that, that front grille does look like a Datsun go. It does look like a Datsun. But uh, the, the story behind this, interestingly enough, is that there was a period in the back end of 2019 when Nissan were considering dropping Datsun as a brand. Okay. And at that point, they handed over this particular vehicle to Nissan. Uh, although it has been uh, registered in India as the Datsun. Okay. So Datsun is still clearly going to stick around as a brand, um, and they obviously shelved those, those plans. But, so uh, it's, it is it's, a it's a very, very good-looking car. We can't take that away from it. It's, it's got all the looks and feels, um, and I know that you know, I've seen a lot of the dealers obviously getting the cars this week, and they are excited. And, and listen to this. Bottom of the range Accenture manual transmission starting at 256999, okay, which is very, That's very, very well priced. Yeah. And the top of the range Accenture Plus CVT going for 305700, which is really, really competitive in that compact SUV market. It is. And in fact, it has gone down very, very well with the press. I mean, the research yes. that we did on it, we couldn't find a bad story about it. Everybody's raving about the vehicle. Exactly. So, so good luck to them. Yeah. yeah. All right, so that's that for the news. And uh, I think what we're going to do now, Pete, is move on to our review for the week. Um, and this time, I wasn't here. <laughs> yes. I was actually filming um, with, with the crew, and uh, we were out of town. And you and Brett Cowell actually did a, a review on the Mazda CX-5. And what a competent vehicle it is. So we thoroughly enjoyed it. I must say, Mazda is fast becoming... Uh, a serious contender for me on my yes. radar of vehicles. So it's very understated. It's, it is understated, but oh, the finish on these cars, yeah. it, it's unbelievable. So let's okay. have a so look at the review. This is proudly brought to you by King Price. Let's have a look at this review. Now everyone's saying it. If you drive less, you pay less for car insurance. But how much less? A tad less. A smidge less. Around 20%-ish less? Or a whole lot less? Like 70% less for comprehensive car insurance from South Africa's hottest paper K insurer, Chili from King Price. We're big into less. Like 70% less. Visit kingprice.co.za for a quote. Welcome to Let's Talk Automotive. I'm Peter Fulion and I'm joined this afternoon, early evening, by my old friend and colleague and an absolute legend of the motor industry, Mr. <laughs> Brett Carl. And Brett and I are going to be taking you through a driving review of the awesome new Mazda CX-5. So welcome, Brett. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be a legend. Not so sure, but I'll do my best. <laughs> well. <laughs> I think let's maybe kick off with uh, some of the design philosophies of Mazda. One thing I mm. wanted to say is, is that I learned something new today about Mazda, and that is that they were originally a cork manufacturer. And that's the, the strange positioning of this brand. They started out as such a sensible corporate kind of company. Now you look at where they are as a, actually a very emotive brand. And that's, I think, why we like it. We absolutely do, and I've got to tell you that the styling mm. cues that are coming out of Mazda in their models of late is just absolutely stunning. And you've got a bit of a, a story to tell me about their design philosophy. So the design philosophy of, of Mazda is labelled as Kodo, which, which means the soul of motion, which just positions the brand so wonderfully. It's not a 
it's not this real sensible brand. It's this emotional styling language. And you just look at the front of the car and you've got this shape of this grill, this bottom element here, which looks very similar to the shape in the logo. And then as it comes around to the light, you know, a little detail, this shape here, this gap here, some engineer had to sign that off. You know, you look at the costing in here versus the design execution. But I mean, That's the engineers master. had, a, had, a, had a, a, a rational reason to, to give to the bean counters, and that is to do with the other design philosophy, which involves lights and shadows, and you can only get that if you have a gap. Exactly, and then as it flows through the rest of the car, which is also just, when you look at a 6.5 on the road, the way that shape flows, this line on the bonnet, the shape into the light, and as it goes down the side of the vehicle, nothing else looks like it on the road. Well, I've got to say, Brett, I have been completely blown over by the designs that Mazda have been bringing out mm. of late. I've got to say that they're probably one of the few Japanese manufacturers at the moment that for me get it in terms of a nice flowing design. So enough of that. Let's take advantage of the car that we've got and let's go for a nice test drive. So I've had the benefit of, of driving the car for mm. just under a week and I've had the benefit of driving it during the day and at night. So I, I do you know, have the advantage of, for example, experiencing these unbelievable LED lights and the active lights as well. Mm. So uh, I've got to tell you, uh, the lighting on, on, on the vehicle is superb. So I'm going to be very keen to see your observations now, now that you're driving it. What you've planted the seed in my brain is like those features are, in my understanding, those are premium brand features. Absolutely. That's what you get on your, your luxury cars. Yet we, in essence, the strategy here is that this is, you know, we typically label it as an industry, from an industry point of view, you know, a volume brand. Yeah. But then the strategy here surely must be then, why must I buy a premium brand when I can actually get all the features in this, you know? And isn't it Mazda's sort of stated objective or strategy to be an alternative to a premium brand? But not a premium pricing. Correct. And that's the key discussion. What is the, you know, as a salesperson, we would talk about the value proposition. Yeah. Now, the value proposition of this vehicle with this spec at this price point, do I, you know, do I need to buy one of those, those really expensive? I mean, look uh, at it. Think about this. I mean, when I got into the car for the first time, <laughs> one of the things that struck me was it really is a premium cockpit. I'm, I'm going to say this out loud and maybe it'll be a bit controversial, but a lot of the the features that I see on this car remind me of Audi. So this eight inch display with, mm. with the menus is, mm. is to me, I'm not saying it's, it's exactly like Audi, but it reminded me of Audi, even the colors. If I look at, you know, how we operate the system as well. So I'll toggle over here and the buttons and it really what are they, they live like MMI, you know, they have the yeah, multimedia yeah. interface. And yeah. this reminds me of Audi, uh, mm. which is a good thing. I think it's, it's a compliment to what Mazda's achieved in terms of the finish, the stitching over here is absolutely fantastic. If I can I get it. a bit geeky quickly, I've got, uh, we can't sit in camera, but I've got my heads up display here and it's showing me my speed and my directions and my speed limit information. And that's things that you get on that other German premium brand <laughs> from Bavaria. <laughs> so let's look at some of the features that we found on this. Um, so obviously we've got a, a sport and, and a comfort setting that we can adjust. Mm -hmm. Interesting for me, we saw this on the CX-3. And I need to maybe apologize to Mazda at this point because I criticized this part here heavily, which I thought was just a blank. It turns out it's actually the display to check if your rear seat occupants have got their seatbelt on. One of the things that we are experiencing right now is a car that is incredibly quiet. I mean, I've been quite astounded at how quiet the cabin is. And I did a bit of research on that and, and, and Mazda went into great detail in terms of making sure that some of the weak spots typically where sound ingresses into the cabin are suitably, uh, how can I put it, soundproofed. Insulated almost. And insulated, you know, that's the word I was looking yeah. for. Um, but one thing that really rocked my boat was it's got double insulated windows, which is what you find on really premium segment cars. The premium features for non-premium money. And you know, I st state that as we were in the car, my first statement was, I really like this car. And I'm, I'm not going to beat around the bush. It is those kind of details that appeal to me as, as the potential customer. There is one compromise, though, that I think Mazda has made on this. And, and I understand it. So it's not necessarily a criticism. Um, the, the motor. 
I find mm -hmm. the motor to be a little bit underwhelming for a vehicle this size. Having said that, I live 55 kilometers away from my office mm. and w was not uncomfortable in terms of maintaining a steady 120, 130 on the highway. Mm. But it did, it did struggle on the uphills. It had to downshift to, to maintain mm. any sort of speed. And at those downshift levels, I did find the engine to be a little bit noisy. But so I mean, that's when you're compromise. working it, it's when I'm working it, it's it's noisy. For the rest, it's fine. Mm. It's nice and quiet. So then, yeah, you know, we talk about that engine. Is it right for the package and the price point? <laughs> and that's going to be ultimately tested by the customer, which seems to be, which seems to be working because the CX-5 represents around about 25 percent of Mazda's sales. So it's a it's a significant contributor towards their volumes. Which means the recipe is right. Yeah. And and that's really my thing about this car. And I just I think fair context. You know, I've I'm an industry consultant, so I've worked with numerous brands and I've been involved with these kinds of products for a long time. And the SUV recipe has just improved in leaps mm -hmm. and bounds over time. I just want to end off with our interior experience and our drive experience mm. with just some other indicators for me in terms of the detail of, of the design. And detail is always very important for mm. me. And so if we open up the center console over here, first of all, we've got this, this tray, which is it's just magnificent. So, you know, this is where I, I've decided to, to put the key because it is a a keyless entry and it has a start stop button and instead of it getting lost inside there you know it's nice and convenient if i can just be a, a little bit of a geek and just mention how there's this padding on the bottom yeah so, so it doesn't, it doesn't rattle. rattle yeah for sure and then we've got our usbs inside here as well um there's this little groove here and if i just pull this cable out that we've got here that i plug my phone in but then i've got this little groove here to protect the cable so, to protect the cable. so yeah. i'm not pinching a cable who thinks of that? <laughs> well, clearly Mazda does. Mazda does. Okay, so Brett, we've we've had an unbelievable mm. drive in the vehicle, and you know, in the introduction, we focused on the front of the vehicle. Mm. I thought, with the summarising of the vehicle and our rankings that we're going to apply to the car, let's let's just briefly talk about some of the design elements that we find on the rear of the vehicle. And you had some interesting mm. things to show me. I just love detail of design. So you know, you've got a beautiful looking vehicle. How do they create that? So there's like, for example, this wonderful shape here, you know, it comes from the front, that line flows down. And also the way they create these wonderful shapes in the light. But there's also an element of real geekiness, the real engineering kind of airflow discussion. So to bring things like the drag coefficient down, you've got this, what well, looks like a little panel, but it's got that shape that acts like as an air kicker or it shears the air to, you know, reduce the, the drag. So you've got a more so fuel efficient vehicle. So the dirty airflow behind the back of the car, which is exactly. creating a low pressure zone, which kind of wants to pull the car back. That's and exactly it. And it's not it. only here, it's, it's, it's also on the lights. But these little touches and you can just see even right down to that, that little shape on the wheel arch. Yeah. Again, it's this wonderful balancing act of design of getting into that price point of being beautiful being sensible that for me is what really it, it, it's what the CX-5 represents I mean Brett we could talk literally for hours on end about mm. about this vehicle it's it's, it's it's been one of the vehicles that's impressed me the most certainly this year mm. that we've that we've reviewed um, now it's time for us mm. to, to give our personal rankings from 1 to 10 on the Mazda mm. CX-5 so as the guest, thank you for the pressure. Um, in its segment, and that, that for me is an important part of the, of the scoring category, in its segment, I really think, you know, I'd go 9 out of 10 instinctively, and it's for me almost 10 out of 10. It's maybe a few little things that you mentioned, those little spec things, but if they could maybe like one or two little spec features, like maybe, you know, we discussed wireless charging as an example. Yeah. That would make for me then at that price point, this spec, a 10 out of 10 car. So my official answer, 9 out of 10, almost 10 out of 10. All right, so now I'm very close with you on that. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to knock it down a little bit more dramatically in terms of the score for the simple reason that I think that they missed an opportunity in terms of the motor that we found in, in the car. I found it a little bit mm. underpowered, but at the end of the day, it's, it comes down to, to driving style and choice. But for me, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. So I do think that means it's a great car. Oh, absolutely, it's a great car. And on that note, we thank you for joining us on this review and we look forward to seeing you next week. Yeah, Pete, just another impressive Mazda product that we had here at the studio. Oh, it was awesome. And I just want to say thank you very much to Brett for standing in. He did an awesome job. I think absolutely. We just get him back. I think so too. I think he did an outstanding job. 
And guys, if you uh, want to quote on your insurance, uh, what's that number, Pete? 31542. 31542. Just SMS King to that number, and the guys from King Price will contact you and give you a very good quote on your insurance. Okay, Pete, so seeing that it's a Saturday, mm -hmm. okay, um, and the guys at home are probably doing exactly what I've got in my mind now. I think we should go and have a braai. Right now. Right now. Gaan ons no braai. Ons, ons gaan no braai. Because you know what I said in the intro is that Andre Boysen from Biltong and Braai is our guest tonight. <laughs> and I didn't want to have him sit here in the studio. I want to have a braai. Well, you know what? Screw it. Let's go and have a braai. Let's. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. It's time for Guest of the Week. All right, Pete, let's go have a bribery. <laughs> Boysen! Whoa! Boysen, what's Sure. Boysen! Andre Boysen, Bolton and Briar, welcome to Let's Talk Automotive. Lekker, thanks, Fonny. <laughs> hey. Beautiful you. How's, How's it going? Lekker and you, man. Good, good, good. What's, hap what, what's happening here? Oh, we're having a bit of a bride tonight. Okay, but a let's, let's, have, let's, have, yeah, let's, let's have a look what we're having here tonight. Yeah. So, we, we're starting off with uh, some, some beef rashes that we're going to quickly toast on the fire. Okay. Um, moving on to a plonky steak, uh, like a rump that we're going to bry and then cut up for everybody on the, on the plonky. And then progress on to chicken wings, susatis, worsi. We're going to do a bit of a, 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 a trick pizza? on a... On a, on a braai breaky, just add the two pizzas together and have a, like a braai breaky pizza. Lekker man. Yes. Okay, so we've got a, we're just outside the, the, the studio here at Bottomside Studios and we've, we've invited some guests to join us and we're going to have a lacquer braai. Absolutely. So let's go do our thing. Let's go and stand Absolutely. here by the fire because that's exactly where we want to be. That's, this is what I want to do on a Saturday afternoon, man. That's what I do almost every day, but <laughs> <laughs> why wait for a Saturday? <laughs> All right, Andre. Talk to us about Biltong and Braai. Well, guys, Biltong and Braai is a, is a Biltong shop that uh, started about three years ago. And we've progressed into selling um, quality dry goods um, and uh, moved on to now doing fresh meat as well. Uh, we've moved into the Pretoria market as well, online, online sales. Okay. Um, so the guys can contact us and we'll come and deliver whatever you want at your house. That's amazing, like and exactly. You, you were saying to me also that uh, part of the service is you come and service bras as well, which exactly, would be a yeah. huge help to me, because yeah. <laughs> it, it always happens that I invite guests over, and as I open the bra, I realize, well, <laughs> I should have maybe cleaned this about a month ago. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a new concept. Uh, we, 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 we're still in the process of uh, fully launching it, um, but it's going to be like uh, you service your car, yeah. so why can't you service your bra? Oh, so excellent. we're excellent. going to service your bra and we'll come around, make sure that it's in, in a good nick. And um, obviously the better you take care of it, the longer it will last. Mm. Absolutely. And yeah. make sure that you've got bra, wood and yeah. charcoal if you prefer. And Absolutely. make if you have gas. Which I was going to say, what happens, what happens uh, if you, if I don't you know if we can. I don't know if we can talk about it, but if you have gas. <laughs> look, look, as long as you bra. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was going to ask you, you know, there's always this to debate. What is this? What is this? With the debate, what is better? Is it is it wood? Is it charcoal? Is it briquettes? Is it gas? Because he's a site, he doesn't understand. Yeah, you know, those burkes is much more bigger on it. It's like us out there. But um, you know, at the end of the day, it's it's personal preference. Um, you know, for for a lot of guys, wood works. Um, like you can see, it takes a bit longer to to make coals, mm. um, but it gives uh, it adds a little bit of a a smoky flavour to your to your meat when you bry. Obviously mm. the the smell of uh, of meat on a on a on an open uh, wood fire yes. smells a bit different, mm -hmm. you know. Um, charcoal and the Webers and the and the uh, these type of briars they work a lot better. They keep the heat be when you go low and slow. And then gas, you know, gas is very quick, so sure. quick and clean. Except yeah. when you have to clean the bra afterwards. Yeah, that's, <laughs> my, that's my challenge. I, I've got a gas bra. I've got a Weber as well. Yeah. Uh, but we do default to the gas bra often because yeah. we forget to put the wood on. Yeah. Because you know what goes with a bra? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A couple of uh, pale cakes. <laughs> <laughs> right, Andre. Another concept that you guys, you said that you deliver, you deliver 
the meat and whatever you order, mm. biltong and drivors and, exactly, and yeah. everything you deliver to the house. But something new that's also come out of Biltong and Bry uh, recently is a Bry box. Yeah. So the concept of the Bry box um, is, a, is, a, is a brainchild of mine. You know, I, I hate getting, getting home and then realizing <laughs> I don't have a salad for the missus or garlic bread or this or that. Or you think you've got a T-bone left in the freezer, but actually uh, somebody took it for another Bry. Okay. Um, so the whole concept behind the bribe box is to, to, to co make your life a bit more convenient. Um, you tell us what you need and we will bring everything from your bribe brokies to your T-bones to your, uh, your cool drinks and stuff like that. Unfortunately, not uh, alcohol at the Sh moment. Sure. But um, <laughs> everything else we can put in there for you. With That's your amazing. With your sure. charcoal and everything. How's that for convenience? I, 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 can't, I can't believe it. I mean, um, I, I presume we can go onto your website and have a look at those, Absolutely. That's correct. those options and pricing so we yep. can... You're more than welcome. So our website is www.weunderstandbiltung.co.za uh, www uh, Okay. Um, because we do understand. <laughs> Once for start. <laughs> Once for start. <laughs> and, then, and then obviously uh, on Facebook as well, there's, there's the Boxburg Facebook page yes. and the Pretoria Facebook page. Yeah, so wherever you are, you can, yep. you can go onto either Boxburg or Bultung and Bry Pretoria's yep. Facebook page. And you guys have done uh, quite some, some interesting advertising and we've got a video that we're going to show the guys quickly. Thank you, man. Thanks. <laughs> So, verleden week krijg ik een baie interessante vraag. Ik bel me en vraag, Bison, ik weet nooit wat om te braai nie. Skaapchops of varkchops. Ik sê van my moet, ek reken, jij is braaipuiler. Maar bultong en braai, ons verstaan. Bultong en braai. So, Andre, what is, what is braaipuiler exactly? <laughs> <laughs> it's when you don't know whether to <laughs> to use a Weber or a standard bra. <laughs> no, bra pilot can be one of many things, like you say, Peter. Um, <laughs> but actually, it's it's more of a concept where you actually don't know what you're going to bra tonight because um, you know it's a difficult choice. Mm. You know, I prefer lamb chops. My wife prefers a, a pork, a, a, like a little pork choppy. You okay. know. Um, yeah, my mom likes a little nice vorsi, you know, so when you can't decide what you have to braai, then I suppose you braai pole. Okay, mm. <laughs> so, so obviously when there's a braai, Andre, the women in the background is also always a bit of a problem. It does yeah, happen. Can, yeah. I, can I say that? Am I allowed to say that? Or am I going to be in trouble? <laughs> I, th I think you might be stepping on some <laughs> Yeah. <things>. Okay. <laughs> I think so we're going to get a few more comments on the, <laughs> on the Facebook page. <laughs> and, and on that note, guys, if you're watching, <laughs> and if, you, if you're a female, you can, you can please send us your comments and tell us what you think. But we've got another video here, because when the fire is ready to braai, it's always yeah. a contentious... Yeah, you, you know what most I'm saying. definitely, most definitely. I think the video explains it quite well. Ons gaan nou braai. Ons gaan nou braai. So let's have a look at this video quickly, just to explain that concept a little better. Liefie, is die vier al raag? Gaan jy al begin braai? Vier is nog geen raag in my skarabol. Bultong en braai. Ons verstaan. Bultong en braai. very very difficult to make sure that you've got enough coals well i i tell you what there's an argument in my household because you know me i like and I, 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 maybe i should stand back when i say this <laughs> i like my meat well done oh my goodness <laughs> my name is peter and i like my meat well done <laughs> so when when, when what it's what does your uh, husband say about that <laughs> what does my husband say about that <laughs> Well, I've got to tell you something, I'm not allowed to bride home. Really? Not allowed to bride. My mates come over, they go, how's it Pete, how's it, there's a beer, sorry, we're going to be taking over your bride. So uh, you, I would do exactly the same. If you think it's bad same. with your wife taking over the bride, uh, mate, you can try when your mates come over. I do exactly the same. <laughs> no, all, all fun aside, I mean, Peter, at the end of the day, it's all personal preference. You know, everybody yeah, likes, sure. a, likes a steak a bit differently. You yes. know, so so, so how, do you, how do you tell? Because if I am braying for people, how do I tell if a, meat's, if a piece of steak, for example, is, you know, rare, medium, or well done? You I'm know what? The, you can go modern and get yourself a thermometer. Okay, you know? fair enough. But for me, that's a bit of a, you know, 
It yeah. takes time and it's a, it's a bit of a messy job. Mm. Uh, the easiest way that I know of, and, and it's an old chef's trick, is, is to work with your hands. Okay. So if you put your index finger and your thumb together and you feel there, All right. that's rare. Okay. Okay. And if you go to your middle finger, that's medium. Uh -huh. If you go there, that's that's what you like. That's well done. No, no, no. If you go oh, to right, the sorry, pinky, sorry, to the pinky. That's to the what pinky, you like. yes. Yeah. That's what yeah, you yeah, like. Yeah. That's what yeah. you like. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a simple matter of just feeling the meat with your okay. finger, and, and you get used to it. You know, the more you do it, uh, the more naturally it comes. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, so so your involvement with Let's Talk Automotive over the last couple of seasons. First of all, thank you very much for being involved with Let's Talk Automotive. You guys actually sponsored a, a prize and mm. uh, for, for our viewers competition last oh. week. And what we've done is we've actually invited Marius and uh, Bianca awesome. to the show tonight and they're here because we decided that, you know, if, if Marius is a Windhardt, a keyboard warrior yeah, at home, yeah, yeah. it's very easy to, to, to play game time when you're at home. Do you yeah, agree with definitely. me? Yeah. But when he's here, and there's cameras in his face. I'd Ooh, love to see. Maybe I've got that. a chance. I'd love to see that. But, maybe I've got but, a chance. But let's have a look at the at the at the video, or not the video, but the picture of, of Bianca, and uh, the guys enjoying their uh, their bry. That was last awesome. weekend. Yeah, there's the enjoying their their prize. Like man. It's nice. Awesome. They they didn't go well down there, Pete. Doesn't look like it. Yeah. What? No, no, no. They didn't go well done on, on the their, on their. Oh, they meet. didn't go well done. Yeah. Oh. All right, I'm going to move over to this side quickly. I just want to make sure. Guys, if you're at home and if you're watching with us, please remember that this is live, so you can comment and you can do whatever you'd like. Fritz, are we ready for game time? Okay, so we're ready for game time. What we're going to do, guys, is we're going to actually stand in front of the fire so that you guys can see the monitor. Yeah, because I'm old, uh, remember. I can't closer. focus on you that You can't there. see that fire. And, so. and you like your meat well done. Okay, so, <laughs> so, so what we're going to do, Pete, tonight is we are going to invite Marius Langer. He looks very nervous, to be quite honest. I'm <laughs> <laughs> so he's very nervous. He's going to come join us. Let's stand a little bit closer to the monitor. It's going to be Marius and Boysen versus Peter Fulhun. Yo, Ladies and gentlemen, much, this is game much, time. Uh, help I'm going to be. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's come stand nice and close. And guys, you guys at home, I've, I've got your comments here on my phone. And Marius. This is Marius Langer, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Marius. Good afternoon to the viewers. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> How does it feel to be in front of the camera? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So um, game times work. Well, game time works like this. We're going to show you a partial picture of a car. Okay. You will see that picture on the screen, and then you have to guess what car it is. Okay. Okay. So so let's do this. Go. Bultung and Bry, Team Bultung and Bry. Mm -hmm. So shout Bultung and Bry if you know the answer, and Peter you, you can shout Lisa. Well, I'll shout well done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you shout well done, and then I'll come to you, and then we see if you guys if you guys can get this right. Okay. So the tip for tonight, ladies and gentlemen, you at home, you can please also play along. You guys can. Um, the tip for tonight is that these cars were all manufactured or are manufactured in South Africa. Oh, oh nice, eh? Oh. So seven cars. <laughs> okay. All right. Here comes the first one. Peter. Oh, very, Peter was very, very, very quickly on that one. That's I'm going to go. Yeah, but which one, Pete? The Bucky. The pickup. <laughs> the pickup. Okay, I'm going to give you the point, Pete. Well done. <laughs> well done. Very nice. And, and, and Andre Boysen actually drives one of those. Yeah. Awesome bucky. Mm. Really oh, nice we, did a, we did a review on them. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it, it, it really was impressive. Yeah. yeah. You, can see, you can see it sticking out there. There. There's his bucky. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yes, Nadia, Nadia playing along got it right as well, Mahindra. Guys at home, quickly on the fingers. Keyboard warriors at home because you guys... It's 1-0 to Pete at the moment, which is not going the way it's supposed to go. But here comes the second one. Bolton and Bry. Yes, yes, Marius. Well done. It's an NP200 bucky. Absolutely correct. Hey, so all tied go. up, one each. Bolton and Bry and Peter Fulhun. Okay. <laughs> Number three, guys. You guys at home playing along. Come on, I want the answers. Here comes the third one. Peter. Peter, I'm going to be very impressed if you know I that think is. that's a Volkswagen Polo. 
Yo, Pete, I'm impressed. You're actually getting some stuff right. <laughs> well done, well done. <laughs> that was a difficult one, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I confused you guys. I confused you guys there. All right, guys, here's the fourth one. Oof, building them dry. Yeah? I'm, I'm going to be impressed, Maurice. What is that? Ford Ranger? Absolutely correct. Wow. wow. Manufactured in Silverton, <laughs> by the way. Yes. <laughs> well done. That is proper. <laughs> and, and, and Peter, I was actually so shocked that you didn't get that right because every time, every time we've had a Ford Ranger in game time, you got it right. I'm just being an asker. He's getting well done But I zoomed in, tried to get yeah. you tonight. And yes, success. <laughs> All tied up to each. Guys at home. Right. Here comes the fifth one. Oh, Bolton and Brian. Yes, it's Andre? A, it's a Merc. I think it's an E-Class. Uh, Peter. Oh. C-Class. C-Class. Uh, you know what I'm going to do, Pete? You're going to give me half a point? No, I'm going to give it to Andre Boyson because he said Merc and then when you said C-Class, he said C-Class, so you got it right. Well <laughs> done, Andre Boyson. <laughs> yes, boys. Wow, okay, this is, so this is rigged, eh? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you, I'm, I'll give you half a point just to be nice. I'll, I'll okay, give you so half a point. A, so it's two and a half to three. Who's got three? Bolton and Brian. Oh, okay, that's, all right. Okay, oh, it's close. guys at home, let's look at the sixth one. Bolton and Brian. Yes, oh, Marius, what is this? So it's definitely a Ford. Yes, but now obviously we had the Ford Ranger. So what is this? What's this? Peter. Everest. Everest. The Everest. Yeah. No, they got it right. Why didn't Teamwork. You? Teamwork. Teamwork. Teamwork yeah, makes it. the dream work. Yeah, that's absolutely. it. They got it right. Absolutely right. Okay, so game over. Four to two and a half. Oh. But you can try and redeem yourself with the last one. This, this I made very difficult. Okay, let's see. Peter. Ooh. X3. Well BMW done, X3. Pete. Yeah. Sure. Oh. That was probably just because you knew it was manufactured. <laughs> it was the only one left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well done. Okay, so well done to the team Bolton and Bry. Okay. They got it. Well done, guys. Four to three and a half. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Marius, for joining us. Thank you very much, Boysen. We are actually going to have a pretty lack of Bry now after yeah, this. Can't hey? wait. But before that, yeah. For, what, are gonna, what are we going to do before that, Pete? Oh, we're going to. Look, have a look at how things work. We have to look at how things work. Yeah. And in tonight's episode or segment on how things work, we're going to look at seatbelts and seatbelt pretensioners. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the things that I wanted to make mention of is that the technology on seatbelts has increased to such an extent that we just about don't need to use airbags in most of our accidents nowadays. So it's a fantastic feature, and we find this a standard execution on the Suzuki's as well. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, thank you very much for joining us. We're going to have a lack of Thank you for having but us. Let's go and watch uh, the segment on how things work. Seatbelt pretensions, and this is brought to you by Suzuki Auto South Africa. Welcome to this week's episode of How Things Work on Let's Talk Automotive. And in today's episode, we are going to be talking about seatbelts and in particular, a very special device that we find on our seatbelts, which is our pretensioner. Now, let's take a few steps back and just have a little chat about seatbelts and why it is so important from a safety point of view to wear your seatbelt. So first of all, we did some calculations a little bit earlier on and we worked out that if you have an accident in a vehicle at 100 kilometers an hour and you hit into a solid object, if you are not wearing your seatbelt, you will experience up to 100 Gs of impact force. And the threshold normally for survivability is 40 Gs. So there's no doubt that you're going to be in serious, serious danger if you're not wearing a seatbelt. However, if you do wear a seatbelt, the G-forces are reduced down to about 20 in the same accident. So you're very much within your survivability range. So let's put that in perspective. When Romain Grosjean had his accident in the last round of the Grand Prix in Bahrain last year, his accident yielded a G-force rating of 80 Gs. So if you're not wearing your seatbelt, you're going to be in a worse off position than Romain Grosjean was in his accident, and you're only going 100 kilometers an hour. So it's absolutely critical. So how does a seatbelt save our lives? 
Well, there are a couple of functions that a seed pulp performs. And I've got one right here with me. And we're going to also talk to the pretensioner as well. So first things first, the seat belt these days has a little bit of stretch in it. I can't really simulate it now, but I promise you in an accident, my body weight would cause this seat belt to stretch a little bit. And what that's doing is, is it's slowing me down a little bit. The second thing that our seat belt has is a load force limiter, which is actually a very strong spring that's connected to the end of the seat belt. And that again allows a little bit more movement in my body when I'm really, really putting a lot of forces against the seatbelt. And what that does is, is once again, it just slows me down. And by slowing me down, I'm now getting rid of a whole lot of kinetic energy. So we have three types of pretensioners that we find on a vehicle. So the first one is a mechanical pretensioner. And I can demonstrate that with this seatbelt over here. So you can see that when I pull on the seatbelt, the pretensioner will tighten up the seatbelt a little bit. Then we have an electronic pretensioner, which uses an electric motor to wind up the seatbelt. But the most sophisticated version that we have is a pyrotechnic pretensioner. And we find pyrotechnic pretensioners as standard equipment even on the Suzuki Espresso that we're standing next to over here. So this is in fact the pretensioner from this vehicle. Now what does a pretensioner do for us when it's got pyrotechnics in it? So one of the things that I want to avoid is an impulse force that I'll experience if my seatbelt is a little bit loose. What the pretensioner does is that when the vehicle's in an accident, the same sensors that trigger my airbags will also trigger this pretensioner and it'll immediately tighten up the seatbelt and push me back into my car seat. And that will stop me from having any forward movement relative to the seatbelt. And that's going to dramatically reduce the forces that I experience. And that's why, with a pretensioner on our seatbelt in a 100k in our accident, we can dramatically reduce the g-forces. So how does the pretensioner work? Well, we have a pinion that has gears on it. We have a piston that has the same matching gears. And then we have our pyrotechnic gases that are released when the system is activated. And these pyrotechnic gases push through this pipe over here and cause the piston to move up in this motion. And as it's moving up, it winds up the pinion, which then pulls me back into my seat. So a remarkable device that is certainly saving lives in the event of a heavy impact and is a must-have on vehicles these days. So I hope you found that useful and that you now understand what a pretensioner does. And we look forward to seeing you on future episodes of Let's Talk Automotive. That was very interesting, Pete. Um, I, I think because we don't see these pretensioners, we forget about them. 100%, yeah. And they, um, as I say, very, very important in terms of the, the modern technology that we see on our seatbelts. The seatbelt mm. is, is one of the unsung heroes of, sure. of passive safety. And as you can see in the clip, you can actually see the seatbelt pulling before, as soon as the impact is detected. Uh, so it's happening in, in milliseconds. In milliseconds, literally. Yeah. yeah. So before you start moving forward in your seatbelt, it's pulling you back into yeah. place. Right, so we're standing here with the uh, champions of uh, game time. <laughs> hey, Biltung and Bright team. And uh, the voice has just gone into the fire, so that's <sighs> sizzling away. And I wish there was smell -o vision for the guys at home <laughs> to, to be able to smell what this is like. I'm sure they can start a fire at home. They can start. <laughs> I've, I think a lot of fires have actually just started all around the, the country. I think, I, I think what we've done here is a world first, by I the way. Think, I think so too. Yeah. Live a car, show, a live with, car a show with a bra. Absolutely. Awesome. I haven't seen that on the other show. Which the, one? The, no. The, the other one with the gear. <laughs> but anyway. All right, they guys. They don't know how to bry. They don't know how to bry, but now we've told them. Okay, so we've, we've introduced in season three Tapper of the Week, Pete. Mm, mm. And, and this is probably your favorite part. Uh, it's my favorite part. It's the only thing that makes me look good after losing <laughs> continuously on the game time. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what I've done is I've selected the one that, that had the most impact. <laughs> on, on the viewers this season. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, enjoy this again and I'll play it three times, I promise you. <laughs> here's here's Tapper of the Week. So Pete, this was absolutely my oh, favorite yes. Tapper of the Week. Isn't this the one where the guy actually 
lost one of his shoes in this exactly. incident. So, so, so guys, look at the jacket. Where the, he jacket his jacket. the jacket went <laughs> off flying, and uh, yeah, that I think that's a, what's that? An XR uh, 500 Honda, I think it is. It's. <laughs> Sure. So there he, he came, the shoe's lying just in front of the ramp, okay, and uh, this is a, a, a fire department guy, I think he check his shirt, yeah. Yeah, fire yeah, yeah. department New York, just look at, just, I just, I just want to show it one more time because it's just, it was absolutely brilliant, look at the shoe flying as soon as he hits the top. My part was when he threw the jacket. That, that's the funniest because part. Because you knew. <laughs> Just look at the shoe flying. <laughs> then he realizes that the one shoe's off, so he takes off the other shoe. <laughs> Just to balance it out. He's proud. Very good dismount. But you know what, Farney? Having seen this now a few times, I've got to say that he did get the bike on. Yeah, didn't he? he did get the bike on. Mm. It is loaded. It is <laughs> loaded. <laughs> uh, All right. Brilliant. Yo, can, look at can, this. Look can, how this is going. Can you, can you hear the sizzling? Oh, wait, wait. Let me do <laughs> I'll take one for the team. Oh, at least you're going to smell like a bride. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Our, 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 guest, our guests that joined us tonight, thank you very much for joining us. Thank Bolton so and Brian, Andre awesome. Boyson, thank you so much. Marius, thanks for actually coming on live and actually winning. winning. <laughs> Just to prove a point. <laughs> uh, luckily, you can get some more meat from Andre tonight. Thank you so much. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. That brings us to the end of season three of Let's Talk Automotive. We are going on a two-week production break. Yep. And we'll be back, I think it's the first week of May. Bigger and better things to come. Can't wait. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you. I think it's the 6th of May, if I'm not mistaken. But keep an eye out on our Facebook page. We'll see you then. Cheers, everyone.